get to your battle station. In 1821, Mexico gained independence from Spain. The Mexican government established a general colonization law that allowed settlers to settle in Mexico. Among the settlers were many Americans. In the year 1830, President Bustamante outlawed immigration of U.S. citizens to the region of Cojila y Tejas, where many Americans had moved. The settlers who lived there were outraged and held a convention in 1832 to demand U.S. citizens the right to immigrate, but nothing came of it. The president of these meetings, Stephen F. Austin, a year later proposed Texas become a separate Mexican state. Antonio de Padua Maria Severino Lopez de Santa Ana y Perez de Lebron, the new leader of Mexico, dissolved Congress in his Siete Leyes, or the Seven Laws, and transforms Mexico from a federalist government to a centralist or dictatorship government backed by military. This was the final straw for Texans, and the first revolts and skirmishes ensue in 1835. And on March 2, 1836, Texas declares its independence in the Texas Declaration of Independence. Santa Ana pledged to bring this rebellion to a quick end, and his first maneuver was sending troops under Jose de Uria to destroy Goliad, a city previously captured by Texas troops and the location where the Texas Declaration of Independence was signed. Santa Ana declared that all survivors were to be killed, and 342 men lost their lives in what has become known as the Goliad Massacre. The Alamo was built by Spanish missionaries who wanted to spread Christianity to the New World. The Alamo was located in San Antonio de Bexar, the city that served as the capital of New Texas and a population of 2,500 strong. The importance of San Antonio was that it was the center of business and commerce because quite literally then, all roads lead to San Antonio. Before the battle, William B. Travis wrote a famous letter titled Victory or Death in which he exclaimed the Texans will never retreat or surrender and asked for fellow settlers to pick up their weapons and join the fight. Few did. When Santa Ana arrived with his soldiers on February 23, 1836, the Texans found themselves surrounded by 1,500 Mexicans to their 200. The Mexicans sieged the Alamo for 13 days, and on the final day of the battle, March 6, 1836, the Mexicans attacked three times. The Texans held twice, but couldn't hold the last two. There were several famous people to lose their lives at the Alamo, one of which was James Bowie, a famed knifesman from Louisiana, and Davy Crockett, a famous and famed frontiersman from Tennessee. Although the Texans fought gallantly, and the ratio of Texas dead to Mexican was 1 to 3. This was a war of attrition, 
and the Texans were outnumbered and soon obliterated. The total dead was 400 to 600 Mexicans and 182 to 257 Texans. There were no survivors. There have been many courageous battles across world history, and the Alamo ranks upon great battles such as Gettysburg, D-Day, and Iwo Jima. The Alamo inspired many frontiersmen and Texans to join the war. These new troops were sent to fight in the Battle of San Jacinto in present-day Harris County, Texas. The Texans, led by Sam Houston, rallied to defeat the Mexicans in 18 minutes, where 630 Mexicans were killed and only 9 Texas deaths. The dominant battle cry was Remember the Alamo. Santa Ana was captured three weeks later and signed a treaty to leave the region. Due to growing consent for Texas and America and an overall feeling in Texas to join America, Texas officially becomes the 28th U.S. state on December 29, 1845. The only problem is that Mexico still claims the territory, and the Mexican-American War breaks out, and Texas becomes the last thing American fought as for as a nation before the Civil War. The war ends as a victory for the United States, and in 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo is signed. The U.S. gained many territories as a result of this war, such as California, Utah, and New Mexico, which raised slavery issues in the U.S., what is to become of this land when what will be free? What won't? Southerners wanted the land to be slave states, and Northerners wanted to increase the amount of free states. America tried to resolve this conflict in the Compromise of 1850, in which California was to become a free state, Texas to become a slave state, and is enlarged, and the rest would be undecided. But tensions boiled, and the Civil War began in 1861. The Alamo is now the most popular historic site to visit in Texas. 2.5 million people visit every year. The Alamo stands for Texas's liberty and ideals. Today, Texas is the second biggest state in terms of land mass and population. The GDP of Texas, $1.6 trillion, is equivalent to that of Spain and Mexico. Major cities include Dallas, Austin, and Houston. While their primary exports are oil and cotton, Texas is also home to other businesses with the likes of Dell, AT&T, and GameStop. And think about how all of this is a result of the Alamo, a momentous event which shaped the U.S. for generations, and whose influence can still be felt to this day. Back in 1836, Houston said to Travis, Get some volunteers and go fortify the Alamo. Well, the men came from Texas and from old Tennessee, and they joined up with Travis just to fight for the right to be free.